Okay, so thank you for joining me on today's webinar, Batch Processing in FC Express 7. Today's webinar is going to focus on our comprehensive batch processing feature, um, focusing on what is batch processing specifically in FC Express. So as part of uh, the comprehensive batch processing feature that we offer in FC Express, hopefully by today's webinar you'll see that the overall concept of batch processing will allow you to analyze as many data files as you need to analyze consecutively within this given layout um, without actually have to building new plots and new gates or a new strategy for each file that you're analyzing through this template. In FC Express, batch processing gives you the ability to basically take your data and export it, export it in a number of different formats. And the way we do that is by a feature called batch actions. And specifically what a batch action is, as we'll see later on in this presentation, a batch action is a format or a type of action that's being performed on your data as part of the endpoint of your analysis. So specifically, let's say you wanted to export your data to PDF or um, export your data into a PowerPoint presentation, or maybe you wanted to append it to uh, some a data to some uh, spreadsheet that you've created. All that can be done through batch processing through the use of batch actions. And we'll get on in a little bit into detail uh, later, a little bit later in the, uh, the presentation. Okay, so the idea with batch processing in FCS Express is it applies the layout analysis to every item in your data list. Okay, so for those of you that aren't familiar with the data list, basically what the data list is, it's this window that is part of FCS Express, part of the UI in FCS Express, and the data list is where you add data to your FCS Express template. And basically what's going on in this template is this data that's in your data list is being played through this template that you have that you've created okay um, and as we're playing the data through this template you're going to see the data in the plots automatically refresh with all the different data files one by one one after another in your template and access express is going to export this data with whatever formats whatever batch actions we set up as part of this template okay we're going to go over in more detail about that later Okay, but the way FCS Express actually process, processes this information is by using this concept that we call the iteration. Okay, now the iteration we go into more detail in our Managing Data in FCS Express 7 webinar. So if you haven't seen that, please uh, feel free to go to our website or go to our YouTube channel and view that webinar. We just held it recently, uh, so the video should be posted uh, for any of you that actually intended that webinar. You should have received a link uh, to view that webinar at your leisure. But just as a, a summary, the idea with the iteration is it, the iteration can be a, a data file, it could be a group of data files. But the idea is that that iteration is viewed in your layout as part of the analysis. Okay, so as an example of an iteration, it could be several files that you're grouping together um, based off of a study subject, or maybe you're grouping uh, data together as part of a time point study. Or, you know, probably. Um, more commonly, let's say you have a titration experiment where you have a number of files that are being grouped together where each of those files are just varying concentrations of antibody uh, that was collected as part of that titration experiment. Okay, In essence, the iteration in FCS Express could be whatever you want it to be, whether it's a single file or multiple files. But FCS Express is set up so that way this layout shows a single iteration at a time and you can set up whatever um, sequence of plots, whatever gaining strategy that you want to use to analyze that iteration and then process and go on to the next iteration. And that's what's happening in FC Express. So the idea with the iteration, it's a quick way to change um, from one sample to another sample or group of samples when you're reviewing the data in your template. And then FC Express uses this iteration as a way to pa package that so that way it can go on to the next sample. Okay. And as part of that iteration, FC Express knows that all the different components of that iteration it will know all the different plots where a particular file and iteration is being displayed as part of this template. Okay, And also as part of this uh, webinar, what we'll do is we'll also talk about some of the various batch processing options and run modes that are available in FCS Express. Okay. So what I have here is I have a basic template going on just to kind of show us the different things we're going to do. So it's, 
So this temp, this uh, webinar is not going to necessarily show you the basics of how to insert plots and gates and, and create stats and all this stuff. So if those are our topics in which you're interested, please feel free to wa uh, watch many of the other webinars or other videos that we offer that go into more detail about those different features. Okay. Basically, today's webinar is just going to focus on analyzing data and just batch processing that data and all the different things that we how uh, what we can do with batch uh, batch processing in FCS Express. Okay, so as you can see, this uh, this template is basically a pretty simple template. I have three plots. I have a, a, a one histogram that has multiple overlays within it. Um, I have a density plot. I have a dot plot. You know, uh, some of these gated events have colors applied to them, and I'm also emphasizing various events. Okay, I also have a spreadsheet with various data. I have a customized table that I've inserted with uh, some some statistical information from my data. And then I have a statistical table just showing me some information as it relates to my, my histogram. And the same information I actually just dragged and dropped into this spreadsheet. Okay, So again, this template has this information on one page. And on the next page, we just have another copy of that overlay plot that we have here. And I'll get to why I have that one page with that one plot on that page in, an, in a second. But in this exercise, what we're going to do is... We're going to show you how to add batch actions to our layout. Okay, so from the batch tab, you'll see that there's a tool for batch actions. If we click on that, we can open up the window. Okay, and in this batch actions window, you can see I already have two batch actions in here. But what we're going to do is we're going to talk about how we can add these actions and how we can format them so that way FCS Express will take my data, it'll produce my data in any of these formats that I've selected. And I can format the properties for that action. We're going to go specifically into what those properties can be. Okay. So as part of this exercise, what we're going to do is we're going to add a print action. We're going to show you how you can save your layout. We're going to show you how you can export your data to PowerPoint, to PDF, how you can save images of your data, and then how we can export our data to Excel. Okay. And I'm going to talk about the various Excel exports that we offer as part of this. Okay. And as part of this, we'll also show you how the batch actions can be formatted and how we can manipulate them. Okay, so that way we determine the order in which they're performed as part of the batch process. Okay, so within my batch actions window, you'll see that we have a number of different panes here on the left. Okay, so to add an action to the list, we can simply just click on the action that we want to add. So if I wanted to print, for example, I'm going to click on my print module. And then when I select this, I'm going to format the properties for this batch action. Okay. In this case, I could format the printer that I want to go to, or maybe I just simply want to send it to a graphic uh, program, or maybe I just want to send it directly to OneNote. Whatever it may be, you can select that option and just click OK. And then you can format the overall properties of how this is going to print it, whether you want to print a full page, um, how many pages you want to print, do you want to print all of the pages in your layout, do you want to just print the current page, or maybe you just want to print a range of pages, maybe just pages one through three, whatever it may be. And whether you want these to be one-sided, collated, not collated, what the color mode is, how many copies, and so on. Once you formatted this to your liking, you can click OK. And you'll see that this is now added to the list. OK. So some of the other actions we can add are maybe we want to save our data in a copy of this template that we're using without overwriting the original template that you have established. Okay, And the way we can do that is we can use our save layout action. So our save layout action is a great way to archive your data in a copy of this template without overwriting your actual template. Okay, So if I click on my save layout action, this window pops up where it allow me to define where I want to save this file. So batch processing is a great way to automate your analysis for you. Okay. So as you're analyzing data, you'll see that when we're about to batch process, we can simply just click a button. And then the way we format these actions, FCS Express will know where these can all go. Okay. So I can actually just define an output file for each one of these actions. And the way I could do that is simply just by clicking on the folder at the end of this field. Okay. 
And once I find the location of where I want to go, then I could just give my file a name. Okay. So since I'm saving a layout, F6 Express will save these files in the .fey format. And the .fey format is specific to the F6 Express layouts that we use in our software. I'm going to click Save. And you'll see here that it will automatically save it in the location that I've determined. Now, what I can also do is I can have F6 Express uniquely name these files for me automatically. Okay? And what I can do is I can simply just put my cursor anywhere within this field. Okay? Let's say I actually want the software to use some keyword information that's coming from my data to name this FEY file. The way I can do that is just by clicking the T here at the end of the line. I can have the software grab a keyword from my data. Okay, And when I do that, then you'll see that I have a number of different data sources that I can select. Okay, And the data source is just referring to a plot. Okay, Because each one of these plots could be looking at a different file. They could all be looking at the same file. Okay, Either way, we could simply just select a plot that's showing the data file from which we want to grab this keyword. And then I can click on the keyword tab. And when I do that, then I can actually search within my data file for any keyword that resides within that file. Okay? Maybe I have a keyword that's indicative of some type of patient information or maybe a condition or whatever it is I want to use in the naming of that file. Once I find that keyword, I can simply just select it and click OK. If I also happen to just know what the keyword is I want to use off the top of my head, I could just type it in too. I can click OK. And FC Express is going to use the value of that keyword for every iteration that's being analyzed through this template and create a unique FEY file for me automatically. Okay, And I can put any string of keywords I want. If I wanted some type of identification, and maybe I want to put some type of underscore, and maybe another keyword after that, maybe for some type of drug that was added to the sample as part of this experiment, I can do that too. There's really no limit. You're only limited by um, the definition of, of Windows defining how long that pathway can be in, in terms of the character number, as far as that whole string of, of, of information. So it's also as part of the save, save layout action, what we can do is we can determine how do we save the data in this template. So do I want to link the data, meaning that my, my template resides in one location, the data resides in another location, as long as they still have the same relative pathway, the next time I open this link template, that data will automatically load up. If the data has moved for whatever reason, FC Express will sense that. It will prompt the user to reconnect that link. okay. Or we can also just save this as embedded. And what that does, it actually takes the data files that were being analyzed and displayed in my plots at the time of saving, and it saves this uh, as a single document. So that way the files are actually embedded within the, within the, the template, within the layout. Okay. And then once we determine that, we can click OK. Now, if saving to PowerPoint is part of your, your routine workflow, then we can actually just do that here as part of um, batch analysis. And the idea is that FCS Express will take each iteration and will produce each one of these pages as a slide in the deck. Okay, And each of these objects that are on each of these pages will be vector graphics that are exported to PowerPoint. And they'll be retained in their high resolution and you can actually see whatever you see here in the layout is what's going to be in the PowerPoint presentation on export. It doesn't matter if it's on, if it's on the paper of your layout or if it's in the margins. It'll all go to PowerPoint. So the way we set this up is, first of all, we could tell the software whether or not we want to open the presentation after saving, what the quality of that PowerPoint presentation is going to be, what the mode what page is going to be exported to PowerPoint. So if you wanted all these pages to be a separate slide, you can leave it on all pages. If you simply just want this one page to be a slide in the deck, then we could just say current page, or you could put a range of pages like we did with the print action you've seen earlier. What we can also do is we can have FCS Express 
either save each one of my iterations individually in their own PowerPoint presentation, or I can combine them all together in the same PowerPoint presentation. I also have the ability to append to an existing PowerPoint presentation. So if you want to append to a PowerPoint presentation, you can simply select this option and then just navigate to the file to which you want to append. I'm just going to be saving as a brand new file, so I'm just going to simply select that action. And again, just like we've seen with the save layout action, we could define where we want to save this file. So again, I'll just click on the folder. I'm going to get navigate to location and just give it a name. Okay. And also as another way to automate this, if this was a template that you're using with a collaborator, a partner, or someone you were working with as part of this experiment, and we wanted to automate the process so that way this particular file gets saved on that person's desktop, then what we can do is rather than have a specific name in here, we can actually have F6 Express read the name of the current Windows user and save it on their desktop. And what we can also do is we can have the software create output folders if it turns out that they don't exist in that location. Okay, so, I, so if I simply just select that action, if it turns out that I actually sent this template uh, to use with a collaborator and they didn't have on their desktop a folder called batch process results, the software will automatically create that for them and place this export in that folder. I'll just click OK and it'll be added to the list. We can save the PDF, and the PDF setup is pretty similar to how we set up the PowerPoint PD, uh, the setup, the PowerPoint setup. Okay, so again, we can determine what the quality is, what the mode is, how, what pages are going to be sent to, to PDF, and whether or not we want to have F6 Express save each one of our iterations as their own PDF or whether we want to combine them into a single PDF or if we want to append to an existing PDF. And similar to before, then we could define where we're going to save this information. And we can also have F6 Express uniquely name this for us. And we'll use the same keyword that we used earlier. we can save our data as an image. So this is a great way as, uh, as your batch processing, if it turns out you want to save these images uh, of your data, um, it, maybe you want to submit these as uh, to a publisher for uh, a publication that you're doing, or maybe you're trying to make a poster, or maybe you simply just want to save these as a way to save your data, as a way of archiving your data. We can have F6 Express take a picture of our data and you can see that we have the ability to select a particular object, like a plot. Or we can have F6 Express take a picture of a page. Okay. Either way, we can have F6 Express take that, that image, and we can define where we're going to save it, just like we did with everything else. So again, I'm just going to go back and save it back to that same folder that we're using. And you'll see that we have many different um, image types in which we can save our data. So we could save this as a JPEG, a bitmap, uh, a meta file, a GIF, PNG, or a TIFF. And also as part of that, we can also select the resolution of that file. So if you're looking to create a high res image, you can either have S Express use whatever the screen resolution is on your computer or you can define what the DPI is for that exported image, going up to 750 DPI as a max. So again, here I'm just going to have the software automatically name this for me, so that way I know what sample this image is for. And I'm going to click OK to add it to the list. So we have some other actions here where we have the ability to publish this layout. 
So for those of you that aren't familiar, we have the ability to take our data, our layout, and save it in a format that can be read by our free FC Express reader. Okay, And this is a, a useful tool that's used by a lot of clinical labs where um, they need to share their data. So what they do is they can publish their data, and the FC Express will take their layout, it will save it in this format that can be opened up in uh, FC Express Reader. And as part of that published layout, the person who's doing the publishing can actually set permissions as to what can be done within that published layout. Okay. For today, I'm not really going to go into that. Um, what you'll also see here is we now have the ability to save um, specifically a, a gating MML, ML file. Um, and what this is is actually a specialized gating format. Um, I'm not going to talk about this too much today, but it's new to version 7. Um, there are a number of articles about this, so if, if uh, this is something in which you're interested, please let us know. Uh, please feel free to contact us at support.denovosoftware.com, or you can simply just do a Google search for gating ML. If it turns out you need a way to uh, save your gating strategy in this standardized format. Now, before I move on to the report section, I want to go back to this other PowerPoint image uh, export that I have here. Okay, So we've seen earlier how we can export our data to PowerPoint, where FCS Express will take each of the iterations that we have and export them each as a slide within our deck. What we can also do is we can have FCS Express take a particular plot and take an image of that plot for every sample and put them one by one after another on the same slide in that deck. Okay, And that's actually why I have this second page here. So what I want FC Express to do is to analyze my data and to take this plot from each sample and to put it on a single slide in my PowerPoint presentation. Okay? And the way we could do that is simply just by adding a save layout, a save to PowerPoint action like we did before. But what we can do is as far as the mode, rather than have the full page that we had before, I can actually have FC Express put my data into a custom grid. In this case, I'm going to do a 3x3 three three grid where it's going to do uh, take a picture of all these different plots from all the nine samples that we'll be analyzing and do a 3x3 three three grid for each one of the samples that we'll be analyzing. Okay, And all that will go onto a single slide in my deck each of these plots will be their own vector graphic that I can further manipulate if I needed to. Okay. So again, I set this up like all the other actions that we've seen earlier. And then once the action, once we're ready to batch process our data, you'll see how that output looks. Okay. So now you'll see that there's an add report section. So the add report section is where we can actually take our data and actually put it into another format, another application like Excel or Word, or maybe we were working with Adobe Acrobat and we wanted FCS Express work to work with a specific PDF form that we created in Adobe Acrobat. The add report section is also for our clinical customers if you needed FCS Express to in integrate with an LIS system. This is how we would do it through the add report section. So we can either do that through text, or um, in a customized situation, what we would do is we'd add an export so that way that customer could export their data to an XML format. Okay. If any of our customers uh, listening today um, have any interest in LIS integration, um, whether it's through text or XML, please feel free to contact us and we would love to talk to you more about that uh, uh, directly. Okay. So today what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on two Excel exports. I'm going to focus on Excel to export to Excel column mode. And I'm also going to focus on export to Excel cell mode. So the Excel to ex, uh, export to Excel column mode is basically your typical standard export to Excel. What we do with this is we take basically whatever stats you want to export. Each stat is a separate column. Each of the samples that we're analyzing are going to be a separate row to that Excel export. Okay. The export, the Excel, uh, the export to Excel cell mode allows you to work with a specific spreadsheet template. Okay. And within that spreadsheet template, 
what we do is we define all the different stats that are going to be exported to the Excel export. And we can define where each of those stats, uh, what the cell address is going to be within that spreadsheet template. Okay? So let's talk about these in depth a little bit more. So I'm going to add export to Excel column mode. And just like the others you've seen earlier, the other batch actions, what we're going to do is we're going to define where we want to save this exported Excel sheet. We're going to go to the same folder that we've had earlier, give it a name, and click Save. We also have the ability to export data to an existing spreadsheet. And if it turns out you actually wanted to append this data to an existing spreadsheet, then we could select this option and then just navigate to the spreadsheet to which we want to append. But we do have some worksheet options that we can format even further. So if we're exporting to uh, a, a, either a new worksheet or an existing worksheet, we have the ability to give that worksheet a name or to use an existing worksheet that exists in that workbook and just keep appending to that, uh, that sheet within that workbook. Okay. <clears throat> so our default configuration is to export each sample in a separate row. Okay, each iteration is in a separate row. Okay, if we wanted to reverse that, then we can choose that option to do so. So that way, each iteration is a separate column, and each stat that you're exporting would be a certain, a, a separate row. We could define uh, which row SS Express will start writing data, <coughs> as well as a column. And we can also have SS Express write a header for each of those columns in the Excel export. Either way, however you want to format this, just click OK. It'll be added to the list. Okay, so in FCS Express, we don't necessarily export every single statistic to Excel for you automatically. We still need to define what stats are going to be exported. Okay, and the way we do that is simply just by dragging and dropping and adding them to that particular action. So, for example, let's say I wanted some information from a particular gate. I can take that gate, just drag it over, and then define what particular stats I want from that gate. Maybe I want the number of events, maybe I want the percent of gated cells, maybe all cells, and maybe any other stat that I wanted to find. Once I do that, I can click OK, and you'll see that that information is added to that export. So the idea is, as we go through batch processing, FCS Express is going to take that statistic for each iteration that we're analyzing, and it's going to write it to the spreadsheet for us. What I can also do is, if I have a table such as this, I can highlight some data, whether it's just a single, uh, a single cell within this table, or maybe I just wanted to take like a whole row. I can take that and just drag it over, and those will be added too. I can do that for a customized table that I've created, where I simply just take this table and just drag it in. Any statistical information is added to that export as well. If I have a spreadsheet, I can also select the, the cells within the spreadsheet and then just drag those over too. And then finally, I can actually just take a plot and drag that plot over. So if I wanted to grab some information from that plot, maybe it's a stat, maybe it's a keyword, I can drag that plot over and just define what it is I want FC Express to grab from that, that particular object. Okay, so once we have all that information laid out here as part of that export, you'll see that FCS Express will write it in the order that you see it listed here. So if you wanted to manipulate these, if you wanted to move these around, maybe I actually wanted this particular column to be written first so that way I could see uh, what the identification is for each row of that data, I could move these around and uh, place, this, place this in the order that I would like.
with the cell modes very similar. So if I actually already have an action listed within this uh, the batch actions list, I can actually just right click on it and choose the option to select properties. Or if I just dump, double click on this action, I can see the properties for that action. Okay. So as I mentioned, cell mode allows me to work with a particular spreadsheet template, where S Express will take a copy of this template and it'll write data to this spreadsheet template. But just like before, we would simply just define where it's going to be saved. In this case, since it's going to be occurring for each of the iterations that we have, it's going to be giving each of these Excel sheets a unique name for our data. But what's special here is that we add data like we did before. But what we can do is we define the cell in which we want that address, uh, that statistic to be placed. Okay, so whether it's a stat, whether it's a keyword, or an image, we can have F6 Express export all this information from our data, and then we can just specify the cell address within that template that we want to use. So as you can imagine, these spreadsheet templates tend to be pretty specialized. Okay, and customize for a particular analysis. But the idea is that you already have a, a, an idea of uh, the cells in which these stats will be represented. Okay, and then once that information is in that spreadsheet template, again, if you have it, any other formula that are, are uh, embedded within that uh, that spreadsheet, as soon as that data is added, if uh, that information that's being exported to that Excel sheet is um, part of whatever function or whatever formula you have already integrated into that spreadsheet, all that information will update as soon as that information is written to the spreadsheet. Okay. Now finally, what we can do is we can manage this information. Okay. And we could do that through the use of folders. Okay. So maybe, um, maybe you wanted a set of actions for one particular uh, condition or one particular drug, or maybe you want to have a set of actions for a particular user that's using this template. What we can do is we can add a folder, and then we can add different actions to that folder. Okay, and then what we can do is if it turns out we don't necessarily want the actions in that folder to be performed, we can simply uncheck the checkbox. And we can also define the order in which these are performed. So for example, if I simply just wanted to print first, or maybe I wanted to save my layout first, I could reorder these in the order that I need. Okay. So I'm just going to close this for now. So we, we have a nice little uh, pipeline set up for us. Okay. So again, just to summarize, our data list shows that we have nine iterations that we're going to play through this template. Okay, As this data is being played during batch processing, FC Express is going to export each of these iterations in the formats that we have selected here, Okay, the ones that are checked off. Before we do that, we're going to talk about some batch processing options that are available within the software. So from the batch tab, next to my batch actions, you'll see that there is an options tool. Where if I click on that, here what I could do is I could define the number of iterations I want to analyze. Okay, so I currently have nine. For our clinical customers, if you have any alerts set up in your layout, we can have FC Express run those alerts before the batch processing. And also, we can tell the software whether or not we want to unconditionally pause between each samples. Okay, And what this means is it's going to pause between each sample, so that way it gives us the opportunity to move any gates, any markers, any quadrants as part of that analysis. We also have the ability to conditionally pause, and I'm going to talk a little bit about that in a little bit when we start talking about the various run modes that we offer in FCS Express. After we've run through our batch, 
we can tell Access Express that after the iteration is complete, what do we want Access Express to do with our data? To keep the data that we're, and make the keep the changes that were made between each iterations, or whether or not we want to restore the state of the layout back to what how it was originally saved. And then after batch processing is complete, what do we want the software to do with the data that's already in there? Just do nothing? Do we want to store the original data files or just clear all the data files out of the data list? Okay, so I'm just going to click OK. Now to run all the different actions we've set up, all we need to do is just click on the run option here. And when I do that, you'll see that this progress window pops up. And the progress window will tell me, first of all, how many iterations do I have? So I have one out of nine. And how many actions are being executed per iteration? Okay, so I have, a set, uh, I have seven actions that are being performed for each one of those nine iterations. Okay, so basically 63 different actions are going to be performed. Okay, it'll tell me what the progress is. And you'll see that now it's actually loaded my next sample here for me automatically. And it's paused as a result. So now what this does, it allows me the opportunity to maybe reshape some of these gates, or maybe I just want to move some of these gates around. Resize these. Move these markers around. Whatever it may be. Okay. And then I can click continue and go on to the next file. And again, you'll see that it loads the next sample for me too. And again, if I want to move my gates around, I could do that. Now, maybe this particular file is something that I want to save um, and review later on. So what I could do is I can actually flag this sample. Now what I could do is I can click continue or if I don't really need to tweak all these gates, I can tell the software just to run to end. Okay, and then it'll just complete the batch for us. Okay. Now in the meantime, while this is actually being completed, what we'll do is we can come back and we can either rerun our batch if we needed to, and we can also review our batch. Okay, so the difference is that between the three run modes is run is if you're running batch for the first time on a particular set of data. Okay, so as we talked about when we're running we have the ability to pause between the samples, tweak the gates, and then as Access Express goes on to the next one, it'll actually remember what the position of all those gates, those markers, those quads for each of the iterations they're analyzing. Okay? And that's really important because what we can do is we can come back, we can click rerun, Access Express will go through that same batch processing list, but this time it'll actually apply any type of gates that we've uh, formatted or customized for each of those iterations. It'll remember the placement for each one of those for us automatically, which is really convenient. Okay. <clears throat> now the review option will actually give us the ability to come back and review data. Okay. And you know, maybe what we could do is we can just come back and talk about that a little bit later and we'll see that the batch is now completed and we can actually see what we have as part of our end products. Okay, so you can see that we have our multiple PowerPoint presentations that were uh, created. So if you remember, um, I had Access Express take each one of these iterations and I specified a particular page and it took that page and created a separate slide in my deck for me automatically. So I had nine iterations, nine uh, slides as a result. And Access Express took every object that was on that page. It doesn't matter if it was here in my layout or if it was over here in the margin. 
Okay, and these are all vector graphics. Okay? If you actually zoom in, you'll be able to see that these all retain their high res quality. So very convenient and easy. So here's that tiled PowerPoint presentation that I talked about. So I had that one page. SDS Express took that one plot that was on that page. It captured it for every sample. So any sample that had a particular um, marker positioning that I've set for it, you'd see that it captured that here. And it basically left it all at wherever I left it when I proceeded on from sample to sample. So this is a great way to kind of get this side by side for all the different samples, the iterations that you're analyzing at once, all within one slide. And again, these are all vector graphics, so you can come in, you can edit these if you need to, just like you would in PowerPoint with any other image. Okay. So here what we'll do is we'll go back to the source folder. So as you remember, FCS, I had FCS Express save all this information for me directly on my desktop and specifically in this folder that I named batch process results. Okay. So you'll see here that I have my Excel sheet, I have my save layout, my PDF, I have an image. And it did that for each one of these samples Okay, again, 63 total actions that created 39 various items. Okay, my PowerPoint, my stats, my tiled experiment, my tiled images. I just double click on one of these. You'll be able to see the spreadsheet template that I used with my data and how it exported all the various information that I've outlined as part of that batch action. And here is the export to Excel column mode, where each of the samples that I analyzed were a separate row, each of the stats are a separate column. Okay, And you'll see that what SS Express does, it will provide default labels as a header for that spreadsheet export. So I have my PDF. Again, what you see in your layout, that's what's exported directly to PDF or to PowerPoint, or whatever the export is. I have my image. And here's my high-res TIFF. In this case, coming up to about about 24 and a half um, megabytes in size. And then finally, there is my FCS Express layout that it created for me uniquely. Okay, and then this is a great way to archive your data. So FCS Express will save this information. If you need to come back to this file, you can simply open it up and you can look at the way that you analyze that file at any given time. So let's say I need to come back and I need to rerun some stuff. Maybe I've made some changes. Uh, maybe I need to tweak some gates. What I can do is I can come back. I can select the different actions that I want. Maybe I simply just want to export everything to PowerPoint again. Actually, I'm going to close this because what we'll do is we'll end up overwriting that. And now I can come in and just click on rerun. And just watch the gate placement. You'll see that FCS Express will, um, since this is a rerun, it remembers that this uh, the original batch process was already run. And it takes snapshots of all the different gates that I had originally and what their placement was in my data set. Okay, it'll do that for any of the gates, any of the markers, any quads that I have existing in this layout. 
So however I recorded it at the time, you'll see how that information will jump around depending on what the placement was at the time of the original analysis. Right. So here I was able to rerun that. I can make whatever changes I wanted to and it automatically creates the output file that I've, I've, uh, I've selected. Okay. Now, finally, is the review option. So review allows me to come back and review a particular file. It won't re, uh, redo all the different batch actions we selected. It'll simply just take the file that you want to review and display it for you. And the way the review is, is handled is through these conditional actions that we have here. Okay, So we can tell FC Express to pause on a particular condition. Okay, and that could be something as simple as maybe I want to pause if it turns out that my lymph gate was greater than 25%. Okay, so it would actually go through my data set. If it turns out that there was anything that was greater than 25%, it would stop on that iteration. What we can also do is we can pause on a flagged iteration. So as we were batch processing, if you remember, I specifically flagged a particular iteration that I wanted the software to come back to so that we can look at it a little bit more closely later on. And then finally we could have the software stop on specific iterations. So if I wanted to simply just tell the software you know stop on iterations 1, 3, and 5, I could simply just type those numbers in here. In this case what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the software simply just pause on the flagged iteration. If you open up your data list, you'll see that the iteration that we originally flagged will have a little flag next to it. You can also see that flag from the data tab. Okay. So if you simply just select an iteration, you can just flag it. So now if we want to review that, we can simply just click on review. And it's just going to go and stop on the iteration that I had flagged. And if you remember, this is where we flagged it originally during the original batch process. Once I review, if I wanted to simply just continue, again, any snapshots that were originally captured during the original batch process, they're going to be applied here as well. Okay. So now that we've performed all these batch actions, if we wanted to save this as part of an FCS Express template, because this is our standard typical workflow for this particular application that we're doing, then what I can come do what I can do is I can come in and choose to save this as a template. where I can tell FCS Express to save this with unlinked data. So that way it's just simply an empty layout. Okay. And when I do that, then I can simply just come back in. I can open it up. So whether I do that for my startup screen or if I simply just double click on the icon in wherever the location is that I've saved it, My template is what it is. I have all these empty plots here where I can simply just load my data in. I can select one file, I can select multiple files. I can select all the same files I had earlier. Either way, I can select the files I want and then just load them into my plots. But as part of this template, all the different batch actions that we created, how they were formatted, whatever the properties are, whatever the stats that we specified, whatever it may be, they all get saved as part of that template. Again, it's a great way to automate your workflow, to standardize it, so you can do it over and over again in a repetitive way. Okay. 
So I think that pretty much wraps up everything that we wanted to talk about as far as batch processing is concerned. Hopefully from today's um, presentation, you'll see, you can see how comprehensive our batch processing feature is, how it allows you to analyze multiple data files consecutively, and how it could be a powerful tool to help you automate your workflow, where you can have the software save all these different formats, all with the click of the run button, how we can um, save it to a location that you define, and we can also have F6 Express uniquely and automatically name these files for us upon export. Um, hopefully you can see also that just by being able to do this with a single click really is a, a huge time saver and it can really be a great way to standardize and automate this as part of your routine workflow. And also with the various batch processing options and the run modes that you can see that there's flexibility there to allow you to batch process, process your data as best fits your workflow routine. Okay. Um, if you have any questions about today's webinar, please feel free to contact us at support at denovosoftware.com. Uh, for those of you that are watching us that aren't necessarily regular users of our software and maybe you're intrigued by what you see, please feel free to download a 30-day trial at our website, um, please feel, And you can sign up for a 30-day trial that, where you could use your own data. Um, we also have a number of tutorials available on our website. Um, basically about every feature um, that we offer as well as batch processing um, and with those tutorials there's data sets that we can provide to you um, where you can use that data um, in conjunction with that tutorial. Okay, um, I'm going to stay a little bit on the line um, so if there are any questions please feel free to enter them into the question section of your GoToWebinar control panel. Otherwise, thank you for joining me today and have a great day.